will prove to be a bit of a silver lining for the Pistons. You hear that? Me neither. Because there's nothing better to ignore the long simmering outrage of sports fans than the everyday headphones courtesy of today's sponsor, Raycon. It's all in the noise isolating goodness that Raycons provide, be it in their earbuds or headphones. Me personally, I prefer that over ear comfort while I'm moving around the house, but perhaps earbuds are more your fancy for life on the go. Maybe you prefer the three customizable sound profiles or easy ear tap functions. Either way, you'll be getting seamless Bluetooth capability and eight hours of playtime. Don't sell the 32 hours of battery life short either. And the best part is, with Raycon starting at roughly half the price of other major brands, you don't have to be an out-of-touch owner to experience this type of piece or audio quality. You can ignore brutal reality one song or podcast at a time. The link in the description, you can get 20% off your order as well. Go to buyraycon.com slash utree for this offer and free shipping. I like forcing myself to relax in the face of adversity. And as I should know, Raycons are part of this unbalanced act of basketball. Now get ready for the greatest story ever told. Can you smell the success in the air? I don't know if it's that or carbon monoxide poison. The latter might be more tolerable to some. The Detroit Pistons are one of the teams in professional sports. An inspiration to every John, Jane, and Joseph who dreams of aiming low, fancying themselves as a welfare leech detrimental to society, and gorge at the great trough of complacency and rot. So what say you, dear viewer? Will you join us on this journey of sheer suckitude? Fuck no, you can suck my dick. Yes, I would love to find out more. So you turned into this mockumentary wondering to yourself, what are the Detroit Pistons all about? What makes this team special? Well, for that, you don't have to look far. At one point in time, the Pistons were a winning franchise. Think seven NBA Finals appearances throughout their history. 24 alumni enshrined in the Hall of Fame. A proud group and respectable foe all the same. Their results were nothing to scoff at. Three different decades of championship success, the bad boys of the 80s, the 2004 miracle run, Trader Jack. Yet all good things must come to an end. With the Pistons, it ended with Bill Davidson ascending to heavenly prestige mode. After this tragic passing, the legend of old had to evolve as well. Just get rid of all those pesky traits of the team. And you have the Pistons of today. A team that features the elite of basketball. Cade Cunningham, Jaden Ivey, and some other shit. Ooh, they found Marvin Bagley and James Wiseman out of the dumpster? Remember when everyone thought they'd be good? Oh, those were indeed the days. Just like the times when Detroit would make the playoffs to get absolutely pasted by real teams. In 14 consecutive games. It harkens to the days of grand experiments like that of Blake Griffin. Like his knee, the fan base gets to watch it explode into a thousand fragments. Like his sharp decline, this team is built for tough. To watch. Let's take you back to October. Fan optimism hit a fever pitch as they run out the gate flaming hot. Bursting out the seams to take claim of the NBA's elite with an unbelievable 2-1 record. Why wouldn't they be excited? They just beat the Bulls by 16. The future was surely going to be roaring louder than your drunk uncle's Dodge Ram in the Motor City. And they certainly were roaring. With laughter. Seeing an opportunity to fill a needed void, Detroit would gloriously lose game after game after game after game. Game after hilariously bad game. Not only losing, but being repeatedly blown out of Moby Dick's whale hole. Against elite teams, they lose. Against bottom feeders, they lose. Against undermanned teams any competent team should beat, they lose. Can you count the consecutive losses they accrue? 28. Breaking records and breaking hearts. The secret recipe is that they aren't deliberately tanking, they just suck. Sadly, the Raptors aren't fans of chasing history and had just traded OG and Anobi to the Knicks. Detroit was allowed to win for the first time in two months. Like throughout most of their history, Toronto ruins everything. If you watch closely, you'll see Monty Williams recognize that he made a huge mistake in coming here. 
Is it entirely his fault? Not exactly, he's doing his best sabotaging effort, but let's be fair, Prime Greg Popovich couldn't salvage this singing ship. How often they turn over the ball and get personal fouls, I can see the entire coaching staff age in real time. The Pistons are paying this man $13 million a season. The largest contract for a coach in NBA history to watch a team be dog shit. You can just feel the money burn from your television screen. Sorry, Monty, no one cares if the Pistons were screwed out of a victory against the next due to ref ball. Your coaching stock is going to spiral into nothing like Dwayne Casey before him and you'll accept it with a smile on your face. Fearing reality, the team would defend their honor. Yeah, we're not... 2 and 26 bad. You know what I mean? Like... No way are we that bad. The Pistons were 2 and 26 bad. Just listen to the crowd showcase their Some approval. The that will prove to be a bit of a silver lining for the Pistons. The one set if only you could short sell a basketball franchise, those fans would be rich. Who needs Nvidia stock when Detroit's around? Speaking of business... <laughs> the relationship between a team and its city is a special one. Unless you're a complete curmudgeon, it's a fruitful enterprise for all parties. And lo and behold, the Pistons are at the forefront of such endeavors. Think of the promotional possibilities of such a combination. Thanks to a savvy partnership for every home win, fans get free boneless wings at Wingstop. This season's delivered satisfaction to so many customers. Hurry it up, will ya? We're hungry over here, look at us! My kids have the yellow guy! Ground control to Major Tom. Are you gonna do anything to fix this? The answer is most likely no. But the team will make some random trades. Boyan Bogdanovich, congratulations, you're free of this horrible purgatory. Sadly, not many else are with Major Tom holding the strings. I forgot to introduce you, this beloved man is Tom Gores, the owner of this illustrious club. A man so revered that he's probably wanted dead and or alive at Little Caesars Arena. Most likely with a public execution at half court by a man wearing Rip Hamilton's mask. But the chance for redemption is at hand. What should Tom Gores do? A. Stop throwing money at poor personnel fits. B. Give a proper shit about team performance. Or C. Sell the team. If you answered any of these, you're wrong. He'll do none of them. Let him tell you for himself. We have a good core. We have a good foundation. We have these all these young players. And we have flexibility. So we have to not panic. And do the right thing, execute, and have urgency. But don't, don't ruin the, the ship, the boat here. It's, it's pretty good. Don't worry though, Pistons fans. Change is coming. Probably in the form of nickels and dimes. Think of what this team does for the community for crying out loud. Winning isn't all a franchise can do, you know. With the season winding down, what will this organization think of next? Rebuilding a rebuild of a failed rebuild? Cherish this majesty. We're witnessing a legendary season in the 313. The greatest accomplishment in at least 15 years. And the reward for it will probably be selecting fifth in the upcoming draft. As has always been written. <laughs>